Hey guys, I just wanted to make sure that this message here on screen was pointed out to everyone, particularly for this episode. There was a lot of time spent on these drawings, and since the speed draw is synced up to how long my audio is, my voiceover, there's a lot of flashing lights and zooms and stuff that appear on screen. So I just wanted to make sure that everyone knew that before we hop in today, because if you have like epilepsy or vertigo or something like that, then I would not suggest watching this video. Having said that, let's get into the show. Okay, so today we are doing my concept I had about a month or two ago, where I combine the DC and the Marvel Universe into one universe, and then kind of seeing how the designs of the heroes would play with each other. That's not to say that, like, Batman's armor is going to be, like, made out of vibranium or something, but it does mean that I'm mixing the design senses of both... And by Marvel, I mostly mean MCU, quite honestly, though a handful of times I am going to be pulling from, like, comics more than, uh, the MCU. Either way, basically this means I'm going to try my best to mix the iconography of DC with the practicality of Marvel wherever I can. And now that we have the idea out of the way, let's go ahead and hop into the first speed draw, aka Batman. So for Batman, this is the one that probably took the most amount of time for me to design because with Iron Man, I just kind of like threw him together and I was like, okay, that was a design that worked. Um, but for Bats, I had to really consider what I wanted to do with Batman. There are two main things that I thought would be imperative for Batman. Number one is that his um, silhouette is clear while still having that uh, freaky kind of moving shadow thing that he is mostly known for. Um, and second is that he needed to also be practical in how his suit was designed. So the way I kind of took that was that the armor plate that makes up the bat symbol is actually extremely bright. Like, it's the brightest and biggest thing on the costume. Basically, the idea is if criminals see that, then they are going to shoot at that rather than any other part of his suit. Um, I also made the decision to make him, like, wear all black in order to make it so that he blends in with the shadows much more because I really don't think the light gray leans into that very well. Having said that, it is also because I really enjoy the Tim Burton movies. Or at least the Tim Burton design for Batman. I, I don't actually like how they interpret that. You know what? I'm getting off topic. Um... And then I also wanted him to have these ferocious glowing eyes. So whenever you kind of see him as that blob, all you see is the eyes and the bat, which just be freaky as fuck. Having said that, Ethan did mention to me that like the yellow might impair his stealth a little, and I can kind of agree with that, but you know, it, Bruce Bruce can make some mistakes. It's it's fine. And despite my discrepancies with like the the gray and stuff, I also wanted to keep the gray incorporated into the design. I went ahead and put it like to the sides of his like normal armor. I'm thinking it might go in like three tiers of like the armor plating for his suit. So like where it's gray it's where it's the least armored and it's also the most flexible because that's kind of where he needs it in order to like move the black is the second most because that's where the bulk of his body is and he's getting shot at that all the time and the yellow is the number one most reinforced part of his body so he can like draw fire to it uh that was the basic idea behind that um but i also wanted a way to kind of split up his hands too so i put a yellow like strip along the glove um which i think looks pretty cool and i also put the silver on his on his like little knife catchers that he has on his gloves which I also think looks cool I also threw a uh, brass knuckle on there just because I, I thought that looked neat and also because you know he's gonna be punching criminals and stuff you know you might as well I also added a little communicator thing um, that's on his left glove but it flips up so it's not like a glaring screen like it is in the Arkham games because I, I really don't like that but otherwise that's kind of Batman Hmm. 
I do need to kill a little more time so this speed draw isn't just straight up a seizure procedure. So I'm going to go ahead and go over how I think I would change like Bruce Wayne given the chance, you know, I wrote him or whatever. So while I really like the idea of Batman being a jack of all trades, I do think that we need to take his god mode offline just a little bit. So I think Bruce should be more straight up a detective more than anything. You know, he has extremely good people skill. He knows how to like make business decisions and stuff like that. And he knows how to determine like the psychology of a person, but he is not very like technically smart, like with engineering and stuff like that. And that's kind of, you know, that's what Lucius Fox is for. And I figure Alfred can kind of fill the role of the chemist slash like the medical person in the Bat family. That that was kind of my idea behind that. And I also figured he'd probably become Batman whenever he's, let's say, like 23 in order to, you know, just kind of put kind of put a little buffer of time where it's like it's it's pretty reasonable that he's older. Also, I I don't like how Batman is often depicted as like giving his criminals straight up brain damage and stuff like that. So, I'm thinking that Bats actually focuses more on, you know, actually subduing opponents rather than like giving them like mental problems. <laughs> so, his goal is to basically break the limb of his opponents and make sure they really can't get back up while not, you know, knocking them unconscious. Because in real life, if you hit someone and they go unconscious, that's a really, really bad sign. And yeah, I also put a little list of gadgets on there just because I thought that would be interesting to go over. You can look over if you want. Most of it is like weapons and stuff from the Arkham games because that's a really good list of just like weapons that he can use. And yeah, I believe that is it. Oh, I, I don't think I mentioned this. His belt is from, like, the Nolan trilogy, because I, I, I really love how that belt looked. And that, as they say, is Batman. All right, and next up is Iron Man. Now, during the sketch of this, you're actually going to see I was going to draw a lot more, but then I realized I hated drawing Iron Man, and I never want to do it again. So, Iron Man. <laughs> I took a bit of inspiration from as many Iron Men as I could kind of get my hands on. Um, again, it's mostly the MCU. So, yeah, my personal favorite Iron Man suit is the Mark V, and I really love the triangle on his chest, but they never really keep it around. Um, but I also love the kind of unique kind of hexagon shape that they put on him the mark 85 and i also really like the actual arc reactor look so i kind of combined them all into the symbol that's on the sheet and you know I, I can go over a couple of like his weapons and stuff here because he's not a god he can't like shape shift his armor like he can in the later avengers movies which i i really don't like so basically he has just like a handful of weapons he has his repulsor blast he has the unibeam he has lasers that come out of his like wrist things and he has rockets that like that come out of his shoulder and he has jarvis and that's kind of it that's that's like the most i wanted to like give him besides you know flight I don't think I mentioned flight. He can fly. But that's like, I didn't want to like make him a god like he is in the later movies because I, I just don't like that. And yeah, I also kind of gave him a bigger shift in how, and like the red to yellow ratio that he had on him. I'm not sure how much I like that in hindsight. Like, I think it looks good, but I also think like I might be able to pull back on the yellow just a little bit, um, but it's whatever. It makes it look like his older costumes. So, I mean, I, I, I still like it. Also, when it comes to Tony, because I'm most familiar with the MCU, I just kind of made him Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I just think that's such a good casting for Iron Man, but I mean, he's, he's Tony Stark, you know Tony Stark. He's a cocky asshole who gets a really, really, really rough comeuppance and then is put into an Iron Man suit and just you know, takes off, you know? <laughs> 
I also gave him like gray hairs because I think Stark being a little older when he becomes Iron Man works a lot better than him being like younger. I wouldn't want him to be like in his low 20s. I would want him to be like in his mid 30s at like the youngest whenever he first becomes Iron Man. And yeah, I think that pretty succinctly covers everything for Iron Man. So, as he says, I am Iron Man. Okay, and I think that is going to be it for today. Now, before we close out, I do actually have one more thing I want to announce. I am opening commissions. Um, so that's kind of why the art in this episode is a lot more holy wow than normal and a lot more uh, conceptual because I wanted to kind of show off flex my creative muscles and show you what I can do. The uh, sheet for my commissions is on screen right now and if you want a commission go ahead and DM me on Twitter at Real Connerwing. Um, RC and W is capitalized and just you know if, if you want to like support me if you want a piece of artwork in like my art style then please just DM me and we can uh, work out whatever you want. And I believe that is going to be it for this episode. I'm not sure what the next speed draw is going to be. I'm sure it'll be like interesting at the very least, but I'm thinking we go back and do some more Ben 10 redesigns or depending on how well this video does, we might do more DC and Marvel stuff. I don't know. And yeah, I think that is going to be it for this time. Bye.